great because they use one horn. South Africa, one of the top destinations for hunters going on safari. If you've watched Giving Back TV, you know how special this place is to all of us. The place we hunt is very close to Kruger National Park, so we try and take our groups there for tours so they can see all the different animals in this area. No matter how many times you go, it never gets old. On this trip, we had a great group of people, mainly first timers, going on their first safari South Africa. So we are back in South Africa and it's chilly this time of year. I mean when we come over it's typically their winter time but this year is unseasonably cold. Um, this is the fourth annual Giving Back Safari. It's kind of cool to say that. I've been coming to this particular place for five years now, and the hunting is phenomenal. I mean, you guys have seen the videos. The people are great. Everything's first class about this. And we're here with seven newbies to South Africa this year. So seven people getting to experience this for the first time. So it's going to be a fun week. The weather's supposed to warm up. I think the hunting around the water holes will pick up. So we got three bow hunters this week, one rifle hunter, and uh, I think it's going to be a fantastic week. I've been blessed with so many safaris under my belt, so I really limit what I go after when I'm hunting. But regardless of how many times I've been to Africa, zebra and gemsbuck are always on the list. These two animals are incredibly skittish, and it's tough to catch them at a water hole. So when they show up, it gets the blood pumping. Those zebra fed away before offering me a shot, but an hour later, four gemsbuck came in and there was one really old bull I really wanted to take. Giving Back is brought to you by Hammer Bullets, True Flight Adventures, Hunt Tech Pro, Kafaro International, Kenetrek Boots, Kanadi Elite Taxidermy Studio. I don't know why 
we had these four Gemsba come in and uh, I wanted to get a, a Gemsba bull on this trip and there were, there were two bulls in, he was the biggest one and he finally gave me a about a 20, 22 yard shot broadside and uh, the shot felt really, really good but uh, I did not punch, I mean it punched all the way through the other side but the arrow was still in him which was odd for my bow so um, I think it was a good shot. It looked like the placement was really good, but um, I don't know. I'm still shaking pretty bad, so we'll give it a few minutes, let everything kind of calm down, and then I call the trackers and see what happens. So it's right by this tree here. Uh, okay. That's where you see you stand right here. Uh, okay. Then you run straight. Straight, right there. Okay. And it, it was so dusty, I couldn't see if they went left or if they went right. Very first thing we saw were the Tessabee. Did you see it? Came right here three different times and drank. Out of range. And the zebra. No, from the blind you can't shoot here. Oh, okay. I feel better now. I'll drag his leg up there in the up buddy. You had me worried. <laughs> Didn't go that far did it? <laughs> it's still in there. He must have fallen on the arrow. <clears throat> okay we got the very back of the lung didn't it? I think the entry, I, I think the entry got the lung, but it was, it was a little far back. Cause, but if he was broadside, this it came back out way farther back than I shot it. It had to hit off the road. He was completely broadside to me for sure. Yeah. Might have deflected off the first trip already, but that wouldn't on the rear truck wouldn't strike might have deflected off the inside somewhere. Got lucky. Can we shake hands due to COVID? Thanks, brother. Good bad thing. Not bad. <laughs> so after we got done taking pictures of the Gems buck, we were all just kind of standing around talking a little bit like we do and Jeffy has said he was gonna go back and pick up the vehicle. Now, when the guys came in to pick us up, they left the vehicle at the blind. So as he went back, we were kind of visiting and me being me, I was out looking around at rocks and everything else. And it was then that I heard Jeffy scream. And my back was kind of to everybody. And as I turned around, I heard Tino yell, run. Now, there was part of me at that time that healthy was just kind of joking around it was Ozzy's first day in Africa and then I heard the the hooves and I could then see the buffalo through the brush and as Jeffius came around the corner I saw the buffalo now at first I didn't run because I didn't know if he was with the herd so I kind of scanned to my left and didn't see any other buffalo so it was then that I turned and ran and I ran directly away from the buffalo, probably about 40 or 50 yards was all. And there was a, a tree, uh, not a very big tree, but something I'd kind of get behind. And so I just wanted to get behind the tree and see what was going on. So I got behind the tree, um, looked back, and noticed that there was nobody left between me and the buffalo. 
at that point there was three other trackers well they were gone and i could see jeffius on the ground and the buffalo saw me and he's coming right to me and i, I think at that moment i probably panicked a little bit because i turned and ran directly away now there's absolutely no way you can outrun a cape buffalo but i didn't really know what else to do so i took off running and it seemed like every step I could hear his hooves, I could hear him grunting, and he was getting closer and closer. And at one point, I kind of looked over my left shoulder, and that buffalo was maybe 10 yards. His head was down. Um, he was so close to me that I figured there was going to be an impact. And I turned kind of to my left. I turned back around. Then I turned to my left to, to kind of move a different way. And my foot got caught up on some brush, and I went down face first. Now, my bow is in my right hand, my camera's in my left hand, and I just went down um, face first into the thorns, and I kind of braced for the impact as I looked back, and that buffalo had jumped over basically my feet. Um, he, he didn't stop, and so I immediately got up and got behind this little two-foot-tall brush pile and, and watched him run off, and it was at that moment that I could hear them screaming my name and hollering for me, and it was, it was the weirdest feeling. Um, <laughs> the stuff you don't see in Africa. Five minutes after we get done taking pictures <clears throat> of the Gemsbuck, we're going back to get the truck and Jeffries comes running and screaming through the brush and a buffalo bull is chasing him. And we all scattered in different directions and it ran Jeffries over, kept coming and it turned on me and I ran and tripped and fell underneath some brush and it freaking jumped me and didn't gore me. So got a little cut, but other than that, all's well that ends well. Could have been much worse. At that moment, um, everything was like black. It was just, I was staring at the ground and like I could hear them hollering my name, but everything was black. And I think I was just hyperventilating at that point. Um, I, I think that the gravity of that moment kind of hit me. But anyway, I got my wits about me. I hollered back to them that I was okay. Uh, they heard where I was, came over, and we started picking up pieces of my camera and stuff like that. And that's when we noticed Jeffius laying on the ground. He was still back at the initial spot where I saw him in the buffalo. And I had a moment where I thought maybe something just horrible had happened to him. And so we ran over there and rolled him over and um, the buffalo had actually hit him in the back, in, the, in his lower back, and knocked him down, stepped on him, but kept going. And so by the grace of God, uh, nobody was killed that day. But I tell you what, it was one of the most probably terrifying moments I've ever had out hunting. And um, I just thank God to this day that everyone walked away. It was my first day in South Africa out hunting with Aaron and the first time that I had seen a bow hunt and it was pretty exciting. Aaron got his gems buck and we tracked it, took our pictures and we were all just kind of standing around enjoying the moment and um, we had sent one of the trackers back to get the rig to come back and load up the gems buck. And so we were just kind of messing around and we heard a scream, just a blood curdling scream. Tino grabbed me and he said, Ozzy, run. And um, <laughs> it's a little emotional for me. So we, we took off running. I didn't know what was happening, but I could hear the hooves and I knew it was something big. Uh, we were running. I tripped. I had these hunting boots on. Um, Tino drugged me. I knew it was serious. Uh, he drugged me through all the thistles and the thorns and we found this stump and, and he um, hid me behind the stump and there was a termite mound there too and I just laid there and he said don't move. Um, I didn't. I was terrified. I, I heard everybody screaming and scattering and I heard the hooves and I heard him run off. Um, at that point I just lay there. Tino said don't move and I wasn't moving. Um, I was pretty scared. I didn't know what had happened and Tino started yelling for everybody and he started yelling for Aaron. And everybody was answering, but Aaron wasn't answering. Um, he kept telling me not to move. And I thought, oh gosh, something horrible happened um, that I couldn't imagine. And um, Tino kept yelling for Aaron. Finally, uh, 
like a gift from God. I heard Aaron's voice. He said, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm fine. And uh, so we met up. Everybody got up and got together and met with Aaron. And he had blood on his face. He had fallen into the thorn bushes. Uh, shaken for sure. We all were. Uh, but thank God everybody was okay, including the initial tracker that had gone back and got hit by the buffalo. So uh, that was my first day experience in South Africa and actually went back again. That was quite a crazy first day, but that was very uncommon. Stuff can happen anytime, and we were all very thankful that everyone was okay. On this trip, I told Tino I wanted to try for a species I hadn't taken before. So after visiting with him, I decided to try for ostrich. I went back to that same blind, and that day I was hunting alone as Ozzy and the ladies went to town for a shopping excursion. So I got settled in, hoping I'd have an opportunity at an ostrich. So I just shot that ostrich. Um, the the wind today has been really crazy at this water hole, and a lot of stuff is coming in and just spooking right away. Um, and so I I didn't know what kind of opportunities I was going to have today, but um, ostrich was one on my list that uh, I I've never taken an ostrich, and so I wanted to. And we were talking about it the other night and uh, kind of studying the anatomy of it because it's a little different. But uh, you know uh, there was eight ostrich in three males, five females. And the one male finally gave me about a 24 yard broadside shot, I guess. And I put it right in the middle of the body, right in front of the leg, uh, where they said. And so we'll see, they ran off, but uh, I, I feel it was a really good shot. So um, we'll wait for the trackers and go see if we got the bird. Later that day, I got to tag along with my good friend Dave Poe, Ruan, and Morgan on a really fun and unique hunt. You must, uh, here you can, we can drag, but you must keep a lot for up there on that road where straight, okay? okay? Keep most for up there. Just make the drag here. Okay? Keep most of that stomach for up there. On this road you can throw a little bit every 50 to 100 meters. Just a small piece. Yeah, okay. All the stomach there on top of the rod, I think. Morgan, Machimba? Machimba, yes. <laughs> Machimba. Stinks. <laughs> <laughs> We went to a different part of the ranch that afternoon, and we actually drug those roads with some of the entrails from the animals we had already hunted. 
We wanted to try and hunt jackal, as predator control is a big part of conservation in this area. When we were done dragging, we got Dave all set up and got settled in for the afternoon hunt. How's it going? on top to protect it. You can catch one. I didn't know if you guys would have that. Was it running down the road or across the road? Yeah, it's down. As it got closer to dark, we put the collar on one more time to see what would come in. We looked behind us and called in a totally different species that was staring us down. It was amazing seeing that hyena so close, but we didn't have a permit, so we had to just let him go. They're smelling. We even bite the dwarf dogs. They're smelling in the red. <laughs> Little jackal here. Nice work. These things are heavy. Giving Back would also like to thank the following partners. So we're at a totally different property today. It's a property I've hunted in the past actually with some friends and some clients and it was the property where we cut the poachers that time if you remember that episode but we're here today brad and gene our good friends are here and they're going after zebra and gemsbuck and um i think that's it so we decided to jump in a blind over a water hole and tino said there's a bunch of diker in this area so we're hoping this morning maybe diker or steenbuck and paula something like that so we're gonna sit here for a couple hours and just see what the morning brings
So this blind today has been, you know, this it's been kind of busy this morning. Um, I had a lot of Eland in, ostrich, um, had a diker in, but it was just too small. Uh, I had a giraffe in, and there's been like six or seven impalas in. There's one with one horn, and I was trying to shoot him a couple times. I just couldn't get a clear shot. And then I saw him coming back in, but before he got here, there were six other impala rams that came in, and one really big one. And I was getting ready to shoot him, and then he got chased off by the other one. So I ended up shooting the one horn one. Um, I saw him run over there. Uh, he started walking, which was weird, and I looked back at the shot, and I think the shot's just a little far back and a little bit low. It's not bad, but it's it wasn't right on the money. So uh, we're going to sit and give him some time, and then we'll go retrieve him here shortly. thought about he's I guess you would call management but he could still breed too. Uh, I don't know what you can ask for one on you don't be able to put up a fight. It is pretty uh, man. Deep long pair of It's not gonna score well but he's still a nice nice trophy. They're on board as well. That's right because they use one horn. Right. Every safari is different and they all play out as intended. But one of the highlights of the Giving Back Safari is enjoying a cultural night with everyone back at camp on the last night. Thank you for watching this week, you guys. We'll see you next week on Giving Back. Okay. And... Yeah.